Like all must lasting marriages, Faith and the Natural Sciences have had to work at their relationship over many years. But despite their disagreements, reports of irreconcilable differences are simply untrue. Science and the Christian faith are not only compatible, but they can look forward to a long and happy marriage as they work together in the pursuit of truth. Christianity is a world view, which means it's a, a big pi picture, a map, if you like, of the whole area, even though it doesn't fill in all the details, uh, where science is not a world view. It doesn't give us answers to the meaning questions. It does, it does explore mechanisms. It answers questions about how, but it doesn't answer the meaning questions of why. Uh, so science and Christianity are not directly comparable uh, in that sense, because Christianity is a much bigger, bigger picture sort of view of the world, and and uh, for Christians, science fits into the big world view as one aspect, the aspect that deals with coming to know uh, the natural world, uh, the world that Christians believe God has made and God has ordained uh, laws that govern that world. And God has given us brains to, to investigate that world. And that's what we do when we do science. Christianity is a world view. It's about meanings, not mechanisms. One of the dangers of referring to the so-called science-religion relationship is that this very description appears to set up a symmetry between two comparable entities, science on the one hand and faith on the other. A Christian scientist is a Christian, if, you know, I'm talking about a, a serious Christian who, who believes, if you like, the orthodox Christian worldview. Um, if, if that's who they are, then when they go into the laboratory, that is still who they are. But it doesn't mean that when they're doing their science, they're going to uh, bring their Christianity in in an explicit way into their experiments. Uh, because doing good science means assuming natural explanations for what's going on. Doing good science assumes that God is not messing with the experiment. Because if God were messing with the experiment, then we wouldn't, we wouldn't be able to draw any conclusions about how the natural world works. Uh, so the Christian, as scientist, assumes that God is not messing about with the experiment but they, they remain a committed Christian. Uh, and they're probably doing their science because they think it's worthwhile within their worldview. In short, to quote the words of Galileo Galilei, the central figure in the most famous so-called conflict between science and religion, the Bible teaches how to go to heaven and not how the heavens go. There's no doubt that science is the bedrock of a lot of how we live, but Science is only part of the whole reality, and there's an awful lot of part. There's an awful lot of how we live that is not scientific, and that the the word I the, the way I tried to describe it was the way I try and describe it is to talk about meaning versus mechanism. Science gives mechanisms, looks at the mechanisms of how the natural world works, but that doesn't answer questions about meaning and. For human beings, it's, it's a tautology to say that meaning is what gives life meaning. Uh, human beings are meaningful beings, and our life is so much more than uh, mechanical understandings and mechanical approaches to life. The so-called conflict thesis that science and religion are largely incompatible is an old one which has been thoroughly debunked by both historians and philosophers of science. I think we are seeing at the moment uh, a broadening of science or those who want to uh, take science and say, uh, when it, to quote Daniel Dennett, one of the new atheists, when it comes to facts, science is the only game in town. All facts, according to Daniel Dennett, are scientific facts. So if somebody wants to say, well, let's argue about whether or not God exists, uh, unless, unless that can be turned into a scientific argument, then Daniel Dennett will rule it out of court and say, uh, you're no longer arguing about actual truth. Uh, and that is, that is an example 
of what we might call scientism, which is science taken to the extreme so that science is seen as the absolute arbiter of all truth. More recently, however, the conflict thesis has been given new life by an alignment of special interests. The financial interests of the publishing industry, the media's love of conflict stories, and the anti-theistic preaching of a new breed of would-be public intellectuals such as you-know-who, the high priest of the new atheism. But these are people who have little respect for either serious history or rigorous philosophy. People like that who can speak in such a way that grabs an audience. Dawkins is very entertaining to listen to. Uh, and Richard Dawkins also uh, wrote some very good books about the nature of science that explained some of, the, some of his areas of expertise, um, evolution, uh, and explained them in very, very interesting ways, engrossing ways, so that they, he brought science to life for some people. Uh, but he's moved on. He's moved on to uh, an anti-religion position. But because he speaks in a way that is accepted uh, or, or a way that is uh, enjoyed by audiences. And he also, that, that's part of it, the sort of celebrity status, the media thing. Uh, the, another factor is that the media likes conflict. So if you can get uh, a conflict going between science and faith, well, the media will run with that uh, rather than see the subtleties of it and suggest, well, actually, there's no problem here. Um, why else are we seeing the rise of the new atheism? I think we're probably also seeing it in a generation of people who are uh, free of the church uh, and funnily enough, it for some of them becomes a religion. The, the, if you follow any of the conversations online, uh, these are very passionate people. They are, they are on a crusade uh, the crusade is to rid the world of religion. Uh, they're a lot of the time not very subtle. These are not uh, seriously philosophically thinking atheists. And in fact, a number of serious philosophical atheists uh, have said, even, even to the point of saying that they are embarrassed by the new atheism because it's simply not... Uh, really solid, hard-thinking argument. It's more entertainment. Mm -hmm.